October 23rd, Lamentations, Chapter 3 from the Old Testament. I am the man who has experienced affliction from the rod of his wrath. He drove me into captivity and made me walk in darkness and not light. He repeatedly attacks me. He turns his hand against me all day long. He has made my mortal skin waste away. He has broken my bones. He has besieged and surrounded me with bitter hardship. He has made me reside in deepest darkness like those who died long ago. He has walled me in so that I cannot get out. He has weighted me down with heavy prison chains. Also, when I cry out desperately for help, he has shut out my prayer. He has blocked every road I take with a wall of hoon stones. He has made every path impassable. To me, he is like a bear lying in ambush, like a hidden lion stalking its prey. He has obstructed my paths and torn me to pieces. He has made me desolate. He drew his bow and made me the target for his arrow. He shot his arrows into my heart. I have become the laughingstock of all people, their mocking song all day long. He has given me my fill of bitter herbs and made me drunk with bitterness. He ground my teeth in gravel. He trampled me in the dust. I am deprived of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I said my endurance has expired. I have lost all hope of deliverance from the Lord. Remember my impoverished and homeless condition, which is a bitter poison. I continually think about this and I am depressed. But this I call to mind. Therefore, I have hope. The Lord's loyal kindness never ceases. His compassions never end. They are fresh every morning. Your faithfulness is abundant. My portion is the Lord, I have said to myself, so I will put my hope in him. The Lord is good to those who trust in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait patiently for deliverance from the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let a person sit alone in silence. When the Lord is disciplining him, let him bury his face in the dust. Perhaps there is hope. Let him offer his cheek to the one who hits him. Let him have his fill of insults. For the Lord will not reject us forever. Though he causes us grief, he then has compassion on us according to the abundance of his loyal kindness. For he is not predisposed to afflict or to grieve people. To crush underfoot all the earth's prisoners, to deprive a person of his rights in the presence of the Most High. To defraud a person in a lawsuit, the Lord does not approve of such things. Whose command was ever fulfilled unless the Lord decreed it? Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that everything comes, both calamity and blessing? Why should any living person complain when punished for his sins? Let us carefully examine our ways and let us return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts and our hands to God in heaven. We have blatantly rebelled. You have not forgiven. You shrouded yourself with anger and then pursued us. You killed without mercy. You shrouded yourself with a cloud so that no prayer can get through. You make us like filthy scum in the estimation of the nations. All our enemies have gloated over us. Panic and pitfall have come upon us, devastation and destruction. Streams of tears flow from my eyes because my people are destroyed. Tears flow from my eyes and will not stop. There will be no break. Until the Lord looks down from heaven and sees what has happened. What my eyes see grieves me all the suffering of the daughters in my city. For no good reason, my enemies hunted me down like a bird. They shut me up in a pit and threw stones at me. The waters closed over my head. I thought I was about to die. I have called on your name, O Lord, from the deepest pit. You heard my plea. Do not close your ears to my cry for relief. You came near on the day I called to you. You said, Do not fear. O oh Lord, you championed my cause, you redeemed my life. You have seen the wrong done to me, O oh Lord, pronounce judgment on my behalf. You have seen all their vengeance, all their plots against me. You have heard their taunts, O oh Lord, all their plots against me. 
My assailants revile and conspire against me all day long. Watch them from morning to evening. I am the object of their mocking songs. Pay them back what they deserve, O Lord, according to what they have done. Give them a distraught heart. May your curse be on them. Pursue them in anger and eradicate them from under the Lord's heaven. God, it's a little bit hard reading some of these words because they mimic so closely to what my life has been like for the last couple months. And you know, like that fear and depression and oppression and pressure and all of those things that have been happening that that the particular writer uh, in this chapter are talking about, those were all, <laughs> all me. And I still remember when I cried out and just said, I just, with everything inside of me, I just can't do it anymore. I just, I can't take it anymore. And to feel exactly what the writer felt that you came near and said, do not fear. And you champion my cause, you redeem my life. And you held my hand and you comforted me. And even though everything's not all right, I'm still hurt and I'm still broken. I'm still upset. Things are starting to get better. My strength is starting to return. Um, my relationship with you is getting back on track. Uh, and I'm learning infinitely more about our relationship, God. You know, at Bible study the other night, we were talking about where we were in our relationship with you. And <laughs> I, you know me, I just have to be transparent and honest. And I simply said, you know, as you get deeper into relationship, you have a lot more things to work on. Uh, if you're willing to go beyond that surface relationship and, and sadly, so many people just want a surface relationship with you. They just want to say, yeah, there's a God. Yeah, I know God, um, but they're not really willing to get into the to the murky stuff and you know the last three years we've been going through the murky stuff and it's so amazing to me that as our relationship gets deeper um, and it, it seems to strengthen and it gets bigger and I, I start to understand a little bit more about the dynamics of our relationship it seems that it uncovers more and more things about me that I need to work on and ultimately, I love that. I love when you prune because I want to be the person you created me to be. I don't want to be the Janelle that the world created. Um, but it's hard and it's it's hard work and it's exhausting. And you know, these last couple of months, I was ready to just give up, period. I was just done. I was, I was past the point of exhaustion um, with trying to work on the things and the attacks and uh, some of the other things that had been done to me over the last couple of years. And, and you just came in and said, I'm here. Doesn't mean everything's going to be okay, but you need to remember I'm right here with you and I'm not going anywhere. And everything that is happening is for the best. It may not feel like it right now, Janelle, but right now it is for the best. God, I, I know that I don't need to understand why things happened or why things didn't happen. And I don't even need to understand the pain right now. But I am truly thankful for you allowing me to understand that you are here with me. I'm pretty smart. I can read the Bible and I know that you promised to be here with us. But words on paper are totally different the knowing in my heart and feeling it in my life that you're right there with me. It's a whole, whole different heart issue. God, I know that, that I have a long ways to go pretty much the rest of my life <laughs> working on these things. And I know with the strength you're providing me right now that I will continue to work on them. I know that it is only by your strength that I don't give up and that I haven't given up at this point. And I truly thank you for putting lamentations 
in at this point of my life. You're always so good about that, of putting in the exact words I need to hear when I need to hear them. Of understanding that other people go through similar things where they feel like you're not listening to them. They feel very lost. They feel like a lot of persecution from the world, way more than what they felt they signed up for, right? And you always come in and reassure them and let them know that you were right there with them. God, I, I truly can't thank you enough, especially for these last couple of weeks that you have walked right there with me so tightly and reassuring me over and over and over again. Not that I will wake up tomorrow and everything will be perfect, but that you will always be there right with me. Thank you, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.